perhaps no country in the world can boast such a glorious natural heritage as Canada, outwardly a land of cathedral majesty, inwardly as wealthy as the mythical riches of an ancient potentate. Truly has she been called the treasure chest of the North. It remained for Canada's hardy pioneers to brave the rigors of climate and the hazards of the virgin countryside in an effort to build a nation. Piercing impenetrable forests, conquering treacherous rapids, defying almost insurmountable obstacles. They pushed on toward their goal of establishing a new civilization. From the soil, rich mineral was to be wrought. From the tall trees, valuable timber was to be cut. And from the surging streams, there was to be derived immense power. As science created new wonders, time and distance were virtually annihilated. And so from the lofty heights of a modern mapping plane, aerial photographers looked down upon the latent powers of the Abitibi River. The Abitibi Canyon on the Abitibi River is located some 70 miles north of Cochrane, Ontario, on the Temiskaming and Northern Ontario Railway. Almost overnight, there springs up in a virtual wilderness this marvelous construction town site, housing over 2,000 workers, engineers, construction men, laborers, their families, shopkeepers, and so on. Here, a great new project has been set in motion. The wild horses of the Abitibi's waters are to be harnessed to give new energy to industry, new comforts, to the domestic scene. The drainage area above the actual development is approximately 8,000 square miles. September 1930, and the engineers consult on the construction program. Set up over here, Ed. Take a, take a shot down over here. So we hit this line here that's turned off like that. To get access to the east bank, Long approach trestles and the 450-foot steel bridge were erected entirely for construction purposes. The west approach trestle was erected first, then the 150-foot span of the steel bridge was built on concrete piers. Subsequently, the 300-foot span was constructed across the canyon. On the east end of the steel bridge, the long approach trestle on the east side was completed, making it possible to take across the river standard railway equipment, steam shovels, and all the necessary construction equipment for building the high water channel and the spillway. The first work is to drive two tunnels in the rock on the west side of the river for unwatering the site of the powerhouse and the dam. To have these ready before the spring floods gives the engineers only a limited time. In order to speed up the job, a shaft is sunk at a point about midway between the north and south portals. The shaft is used to elevate the rock that has to be blasted out for tunnels, powerhouse, and dam. A graphic illustration of how the two tunnels are bored. By means of the shaft, work is able to proceed from eight different headings at once. Here is the tunnel excavation. One tunnel is lined with concrete throughout, while in the other, concrete paving is placed in the invert only. And the tunnels are completed, ready to perform the important work of diverting the river's flow. On completion of the tunnels, two copper dams are built to divert the flow of the river through the tunnels and leave the site of the excavation dry.
The entire flow of the Abitibi River is taken by the tunnels, thus leaving entirely free and dry the site for excavating. When the construction has been completed, these tunnels will be sealed up. The vastness and thoroughness of the project is illustrated by this section of an extensive installation of railway tracks and equipment. Miles of line, 30 locomotives, hundreds of cars and traveling trains constitute the equipment. While work speeds on along the railway bridge which spans the gorge. The massive bridge has a clear span on the center of 300 feet. The finished level of the dam will be two feet higher than the base of the rail on which these trains are now operating. At the same time, a regular department of carpenters are kept busy supplying forms for other phases of the operation. Another diagram serves to indicate how the riverbed is being pumped dry as the tunnels take on the assignment of diverting the water. And now completely dry, the site is ready for operation. The shaft leading to the tunnels is now sealed up, but the vertical shaft is extended further down and then across to the scene of the excavation. This provides a means through which to remove the rock and other debris from the site. The whistle blows and the big job is underway. There's a man-made earthquake for you. Over one million pounds of dynamite will be required for the blasting work. Meanwhile, more drilling goes on elsewhere for further blasting. One of the 10 steam and electric shovels is brought into play to scoop up the earth and rock. This will involve altogether the moving of more than one million cubic yards. That's a lot of dirt to have to take. A general view of operations conveys rather impressively the extent of the undertaking and the manifold jobs which are proceeding at one and the same time. Down on the bottom, looking up, so to speak. The only conceivable way to get out of a hole like this, it seems, is to sit on a stick of dynamite. With town sites, bridge, railway, and the myriad other phases of a huge development such as this already attended to, work is about to start in earnest. Every means is employed to break up the rock. essential feature of such a great undertaking. And the clearing work is considerably facilitated by using these skips operated by a cableway. Up on the edge of the gorge, the rock train is rapidly loaded from the busy skips. So careful have been the preliminary plans that this is only one of a dozen operations going on in the development simultaneously. The destination of the rock is the crusher plant, where a perfect example of sound economy will be witnessed as the rock from the big hole is crushed into aggregates for use in the concrete necessary for various parts of the powerhouse and dam. This crusher house has a capacity of 200 cubic yards of crushed rock per hour, or 4,000 cubic yards a day. <laughs> 